Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kyle and the name of this channel is Stitching and Sound, uh, where we like to talk about stitching and music and stuff like that. Um, if you are new here, just fair warning right now, there may be a lot of swearing coming up. I swear in my videos, I can't, you know, I can't help it. Um, I might have Tourette's, I don't know. Um, but if swearing is something that for some reason offends you, I don't know why it would, but if it does, um, probably not the right place to be. So, that's it. Okay. It's been a while since we've had a talk. Um, I know last week I posted a tutorial video, more on that later. Um, just a lot's been going on last couple of weeks, um, and there's going to be a lot more coming up in the next coming weeks. So, more on that a little bit. How's everybody been? How's everybody been? Awesome. Cool. Um, I've been okay. It could be better. I'm just going to say that. Um, what has been up with me? Let's see here. Um, I applied for a job that I really thought I had a good chance for. Because if, if you have been watching me frequently, y'all know... I cannot fucking stand my job that I'm at right now. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm desperate to get out, really. Um, so there is this place that one of my cousins, not the cousins I'm living with now, but one of my cousins in Arizona, she works for an online college, and she let me know that there was an opening... Um, at this college, and I could work from home. Wonderful. She knew the people that interviewed me. Wonderful. She gave me, uh, you know, good recommendations. Awesome. First interview. Awkward as fuck. Because it was a group interview, and there was me and three others that were being interviewed for the same job by three other people. And they asked us the same four questions, only one of them seemed remotely job-related. The others were just sort of like not questions that would, you know, determine if you're qualified for a job. So it was awkward because one of them was, the one that was even closely related to the job was, what what makes you think you would be a better fit for this position than the others who are interviewing for this job today? Which is... Um, very awkward to answer when the other people are, you know, they're interviewing for the job too. So I left that interview all done, you know, on this program called Zoom. It's sort of like Skype, but for business. And I'm just like, how the hell are they going to choose who moves on from just these questions? Sure enough, I get a call saying, hey, we'd like to interview you for you know, you know, second round, and it'll just be you this time. Awesome. Uh, that interview went great. I, you know, and I even asked a question that I should have asked when I applied for that one job that I was really hoping to get a couple of months ago. I should have, you know, I did ask at the end of this last interview, is there any concerns you might have for why you wouldn't hire me, and there is there anything I can 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 I try to sell you on why? And they all said no. I think you covered everything. And I'm like, okay, I think I got a shoe in for this job. They all liked me. It was a friendly interview. I didn't have to think more than you know two or three seconds on a couple of questions. So it went really well. Uh, they they said I should find out by the end of you know what would have been this week. Yeah, I found out Monday that. Uh, I didn't get the job. They didn't really give a reason why. They just thanked me for my consideration for the position. So, yeah. Oh well, there's something better out there, right? Oh God. <sighs> On that topic, if y'all need anything edited, whether it's a document, an article, a blog, uh, if you have a book manuscript, self-plug here. I have an editing business I haven't really done much with for like six months, so hit me up. Contact information below. 
Anyway. So yeah, that kind of ruined a couple of days this week. Let's see what else. I got my... Um, oh, and then fucking... We've got a new house, okay? My cousin has already bought the house. I'm talking about the cousins I'm living with now. Um, and, you know, we were going to plan on moving there towards the end of May when our lease for this house was up. And he was going to use that time that we weren't in the house to, you know, clean up and get furniture and stuff. I'm in the, you know, just in the middle of a shift at work the other day. I'm on break and I look at my messages and they want to move instead of two and a half months from now, they want to move in two weeks from now. It's like, I, this is happening way too fast. I, I just, I, I wasn't prepared. I'm not prepared, so I, but I gotta start packing. I don't really have a say in the matter. And I'm just, oh, I got so stressed out. Yeah, so that was that was yesterday when that happened. It's just like, I almost want to be like, well, let me just live in this house by myself for, you know, two months. I'd be okay with that. Uh, oh, there's another cat in the house. I knew we were going to be getting this cat when we moved into the new house because it's my cousin's girlfriend's cat who's moving in with us. Dumb idea. Um, don't ever move in with someone you're dating, okay? If you're married or engaged is one thing. If you're dating, don't do it. Okay. So I knew this cat would eventually come into the household when we moved in the new house. Instead... I have my door cracked one night, and I'm just doing whatever on the computer, and my door slowly opens, and I think it's, you know, Iggy or Dunny coming in. I look down, and it's this cat I've never seen before, and I'm like, what the hell is happening right now? And I had seen it only in Instagram and Snapchat videos, so I knew who the cat was, whose it was, and all that. <sighs> Apparently, she just, you know, she was sort of concerned for her safety being where she was living right now with the people she and I get that you know I get it and she just felt more comfortable she brought the cat over okay wonderful you know but that also means we have another cat in the house and if you know me don't like cats so the, you know it's just it's great it's great I'm I'm having a great time you know uh, it's been great. So, oh, and then, you know, this past week was, you know, my grandmother's, the third, third anniversary of my grandmother's death and birthday. So that was, you know, that was great. That was, yeah. yeah, it's been an interesting last, you know, week. It's, it's been great. <sighs> okay. Okay, that's all I had for notes for that part. So. Let's move on to shout out. I have one shout out this week. And I blame this person fully for, you know, uh, y what I'm titling this video. I'm on YouTube one night, like two or three weeks ago. I don't remember. Time is a blur anymore. And under the recommended videos was a video, I think, titled My Chatelaine Kit Has Arrived. And I'm like, ooh, I want to see it. And I did. And the person I'm shouting out is Crafty Lisa, who I don't know where the fuck I've been, but I'm now subscribed to her and all that fun stuff. Too many floss tubes. Too many floss tubes. And I'm just watching her open this. I mean, and it was a, an impressive, you know, kit. It's very expensive. But, you know, she got the kit and she's just unpacking all of this stuff from this box and I'm like I'm, wow you just sit there and watch her just take all of this stuff out I'm like oh my god it's all so pretty I want to touch it all all of the fancy floss all of the silks not so much the beads but the rainbow gallery threads all that fun stuff and I'm like I can't. I can't go down this rabbit hole. I stopped. I couldn't do it. I mean, I finished the video, but I mean, I stopped. I, I told myself, 
can't be looking at Chatelaine's. Because beforehand, I've looked at Chatelaine's before, but I've known how much they cost, so I'm just like, eh. A couple of days later, she posts another video of her starting her Chatelaine. I'm like, well, I gotta, gotta watch this one now. And then that basically did me in. She went through, like, the chart and... You know, she was showing her, she did a speed up thing of her sorting all the, all the stuff that I'm getting, I feel like Christine right now. I'm getting very, very flustered about anything exciting I'm talking about. And she did a, you know, a couple of Stitch With Me segments in there and it's just looking so beautiful. And then she showed her dog who was way too cute and I want it. And I'm like, well... It's time to go down this rabbit hole. I hit the subscribe button. I went to European Cross Stitch and I spent an hour <laughs> on that website looking at all of the Chatelaines. I was looking at, okay, what's the least expensive kit that I could get but it's still a full size Chatelaine? The Alhambra one, the Alhambra Garden. That's probably going to be the one I'm going to end up buying because um, the kit is less than $100, which. Um, compared to the others being like 250 to 400 dollars that's a steal and it's a full size it's a you know it's a regular size chatelaine <sighs> i didn't buy it but it's definitely the one and it it's the cheapest one i found that i liked whether there was kits that were cheaper that were full size chatelaines i don't really remember but that's the one that i saw oh this is a reasonable price um for a giant Chatelaine. So, um, and I'm on that, I'm on European cross stitch at least once a day, just looking at everything and like, uh. so thank you, crafty Lisa for, you know, making me wish that I have one publisher's clearing house. So I could buy all of this stuff. Unfortunately, have not won Publishers Clearinghouse yet. Yet. I might win it soon. Don't know. Um, so then, of course, after that, I'm watching Letitia, Crafty Curator, her Chatelaine progress videos. I'm like, I want this. And then I go to Christine's video of when she got the Poison Garden Chatelaine, and I'm watching that, and I'm like, oh, I just want, I want it all. I want it all. And, but I can't have it all. So. If it wasn't Mirabilia's or out of print, just anything, or hands across the sea sampler. I seem to be going in month increments now, what I'm addicted to. Last month it was hands across the sea. You know, this month it's going to be Chatelaine's. What's next month? Bring it on. Long dong sampler. Does anybody else say that? Long dong samplers? I mean, it's... You know, if you were to accidentally say that, you somebody might think it's a porno. Long dog samplers. I do want their game of swans, though. That is a beautiful design. Might get that. Might. I'm kind of poor. But might. Okay. So there's that. Oh, I'm all winded and shit now. Christine, this, I. how do you do that? How do you... Oh. Okay. All right, I'm good now. All right, so that was my one shout out for the video. <sighs> what have I been listening to? What are we at? 14 minutes and I'm just now getting, okay. We're getting in the stitchy stuff. What have I been listening to? Uh, two things. One is not new. The second thing is kind of new, but also not. I've been spinning on the record player and what I mean by record player is Spotify, even though I have a record player downstairs, don't have the record. Jagged Little Pill by Alanis Morissette. It, it, that album is the soundtrack to my sophomore and junior years of college. I mean, are you thinking of me when you fuck her? Let's be real. Okay. That album, I always go through about a week phase every year where I just have to listen to Jagged Little Pill. And it just so happened to be this past week because a lot has gone on. It kind of makes me feel better, kind of. Um, choice tracks from that. Um, All I Really Want, which is the first track, is my favorite song from that album. 
because it's very, I mean, the, her, the way she delivers her vocals in that song is just, wow, okay. And the harmonica, why not? Okay. Um, so yeah, that's that. The second thing, kind of new, not really heard this before, but, you know, just really now I'm getting into it. I was, now if y'all haven't, I, I found out a couple of months ago that um, this is just a Midwestern store, I think, maybe just even an Iowa store, I don't know, um, but we've got this supermarket called hy V here, and I was in the shampoo aisle, and this song came on the radio, and I'm like, I you know, I couldn't really make out all the words, and I'm like, what the hell is this? So I asked, um, you know, Siri to define, or define, to identify what song was playing. Voices Carry by Till Tuesday. Y'all, that song, you talk you talk about a big old slap to the face back to the 80s. Oh my god. That song's amazing. I you know that the chorus. Hush hush. Voices I mean it's <sighs> great song. I'll link the music video to that below. Cause Amy Mann. If I had hair, I would style my hair like Amy Mann did in the 80s, because that hair is all sorts of goals for just anyone. Okay. That's what I've been listening to. On to whips. Or should I say whip? I'll say whip, because since my last floss tube video, I have not worked on any design except Fairy Moon by Mirabilia. And I'm not going to work on anything else until I finish the stitching. My goal was to finish the stitching today, but it might be now probably Saturday, maybe middle of next week. I don't know. I felt really good being on track with a goal for once, but then just, you know, all that stuff happened, and, you know, there are some days I just didn't stitch. But here I am. I've got her situated perfectly in the Q-snap. Look at this dress. Now, see, I know that this is called a dress, okay? This thing up here is a shawl. Here are wings. Not, not entirely sure what this fucking thing's supposed to be. I'm still going with calling it an undershawl. Because that just makes sense to me. And hot debate, what is the what is this stuff that she's on? Is it fairy dust or is it a cloud? It'd probably make more sense if like I had more of it done. But like I thought it was a cloud, then somebody mentioned it was fairy dust on my Instagram post, and I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. But then someone's like, wait, but I thought it was a cloud. So now I just don't know. I what is it? And what is this? Cloud fairy dust? undershawl or something but yeah so what do i have left just i've got this little strippy here of her dress to finish most of it's white there is so much damn white here four skeins of white i've already finished one i think i'm almost done with another one but and then oh my god you guys did you know that she's got a foot I think it was Stitching Joanne, she had a post on Instagram of when she got to the foot, and she's like, hey, y'all, I reached the foot. And my reaction was like, there's a there's a foot in this design? There's a foot. Fairy, she's got a foot, people. And I cannot, it's, okay, I'm not a foot person, but some, just finding out, after stitching on this project since September, just now finding out that she's got a foot, I can't wait to set your foot, and I hate feet. Can't wait. And so, I've got to finish the stitching for the dress, all of the rest of whatever the shit this is, and then, you know, fill in the little, you know, addition signs here to make it look like this, because that's where the beads go. Now... I haven't really ever beaded before, so when I get to the beading portion, I'm going to do my, you know, I'm going to video myself doing my first ever bead. We're going to, we're gonna, now if I was smart, 
I would do like what Danielle did when she showed hers, convert all the beads to treasure braid. Um, but I already have all the beads. So, and yes, I am aware that outside of her dress and all this, there is more stitches scattered. I don't care. I, once this is, I, once all this is good, I'm taking a break for a while because I want to move on to other shit. Um, so yeah, um, I can't wait to get to that moon. And the reason I'm not going to do all the other stitches other than I just want to move on to something else is because a lot of them are really hard to count. I mean, they're easy to count if you have the beads in, you know, to count from. So, you know, I'm just going to wait till I have some beads in that I'm able to count from to put those other stitches in. All right. See, I didn't get as winded talking about that one. Needle minders, clay by Kim. You're welcome. <clears throat> so yeah, shooting for next couple of days, maybe. We'll see. All right, y'all. I've got some haul to show you. And uh, you know what's funny? I'm glad... Okay, remember how I said that I was going to try my best to not buy things I don't need? That's not happening. Because um, I need these, so that's why I bought them. Um... But I also never said that was going to be a goal. I don't set goals because, you know, or New Year's resolutions, whatever, or s plans, because um, if you don't reach them, you're disappointed. Um, that's why I call them want-to-dos. I want to not spend shit on stuff I don't need. Uh, but, you know, it's not a goal, so if it happens, oh well, you know. So let's... I think I got this organized in at least a good way. Kind of. We'll start with this one. On stash unload, and for finally have one, even though it's an older copy, just the last one. Um, DMC list with the actual thread samples. Look at that centerfold. Oh my god, that is hot. You know, and I wish I would have waited because literally the next <laughs> the next day no maybe even the same day somebody posted on the sassy jack stitchery page on facebook that they got the new one with the new 35 colors from sassy jacks for only 20 dollars. this cost me 12 and i'm missing 35 of the colors i'm a little bitter about it but you know it's whatever and i got this for We can say I got it because I want to do the conversions eventually, but I might have gotten it for a different reason. But, you know, if you say your goals, you're less likely to reach them. So, just going to keep that on the down low. All right. This one I bought off Sash Unload a while ago. Um, this is part, well, I don't know if it's part one, but it's one part of 50 for the Jan Lynn America the Beautiful series, the finished size is 10 by 10. And which state do you think I got? I got Iowa. Because I live there. I wouldn't get Idaho, because I don't live there. I don't even have connections in Idaho. But this is a full kit. Um, the person sell selling them said there might be some yellowing to the fabric. Um, I checked. There wasn't. It definitely smells like old newspaper, though. You guys ever just smell things? I'm a book sniffer. I tell you what, there are some times if I need a temporary high, I just come over here and smell my bookshelf. It gets me through the hard times sometimes. So there's that. Don't know when I'm going to finish it. It wasn't that expensive. That's why I got it. Because, you know, I live in Iowa. Okay. Next one from Stash Unload. Oh, here's my new obsession. Besides Chatelaine, Teresa Wensler. Thanks, Michelle. Because, you know, ever since I decided to get that Teresa Wensler from your D-Stash, I can't stop buying the shit. So, this is the um, English Cottage Sampler. And I just... I open this the other day and I'm like why can't I take the chart out 
because uh, this son bitch is stapled in there. So I'm gonna have to rip that chart out if I ever want to do this. But do you guys ever get a Teresa Wensler and you look at the thread list and you have a mild anxiety attack because because 85 percent of them are blended threads. And then you look at the chart itself and you're like, there's just a lot going on there. But I had to get it because samplers, ooh, and swans. Hey, we're coming full circle with the swans thing, kind of. Game of swans. I need that long dock. I need that. I need that design. Need that one. Just like I needed this. Like I said, all this stuff I needed. So there's that. This one, another Teresa Wensler, this one was a gift from the lovely uh, Robin from Thimble and Twine Stitches uh, here on Floss Tube. Uh, she messaged me one day, I think after my last video when I showed my, the Romeo, did I show both the Romeo and Juliet and Father Christmas kits or was, whichever one I showed last, she messaged me and she's like, hey, I have this Teresa Wensler, do you want it? I'm like, yes. So... This one is the Stroke of Midnight, I believe. Stroke of Midnight, yep. Almost full coverage. There are certain areas in her dress that aren't full coverage, but they, you know, this fucking thing might as well be full coverage. I mean, and... Her skin is one over one, and so are, like, this stuff... The, that, what do you call that? What do you call that part at the bottom of the dress where it's like that strip thing? What is that called? Anyway, that, her, you know, her, her size zero waist thing, and then her shoulder pads up here. I know that's not what they're called, but I'm trying to be funny. That's all one over one. And when you, I'm so confused looking at it. Because it's just, I mean... There's so much going on. And once and way more threads than that last one. Now, I say way more threads, but you know, I'm sure like about half of these might be the same color. They're just all blended with another color. That's a lot and wow, there's actually a lot of just single use colors in here. A lot. Like there's a good there's a good, like, five colors that you just use themselves. That's a lot for a Teresa Wensler. Holy cow. Okay. I don't know when I'm going to start that, but... You know. It was a gift. So thank you, Robin. This next one. Out of print Mirabilia update. Where'd that come from? How long has that been in there? I'm pretty sure I even took this out of the... Thing. Out of print Mirabilia update. Since last we spoke, Deepest Love Mirabilia Design 42 has gone out of print. Uh, it's a mermaid, which I guess is whatever. If you know me, mermaids really aren't high on my list of things to do. But it's out of print, and um, I need to have all the out of prints. So once again, there was a good there was a good five days where I was without all of the out of print mirabilia, but once this came in, got them all again. Ooh, update. It turns out Angel Proclamation, which is design number twenty five, might not be out of print uh, because that design has appeared not just back on the mirabilia website, but also back on the Witchel website. Which, if you find it on Witchult, it's not out of print, technically. Um, so, one of my friends and I were talking, and she said that she had contacted someone at Witchult, and they just said that they found, they found more of them. So, they've got more, but according to her, they're also at sort of a discounted price. So, chances are that design might go out of print again uh, fairly soon. Um, but... Just so you know, you do not have to, because people are still charging $40, $50, $60 for that design, even though it's, you know. Um, don't spend that much on that design. 
uh, you can find it for shelf price still because it's no longer out of print. I guess it never really was because they found more, but you know what I mean. Okay, and this is what I've been playing with the whole time is, as usual, Clay by Kim. Let's see, which one I get first? Okay, here we've got, in honor of St. Patrick's Day, we've got her Clover Dragon, if it'll focus, kind of. Did that help? It kind of helped. There's that one. And then we've got this lovely pot of gold. With a rainbow backing. Ain't that fun? And then this one. This one I needed. Because when she was listing that night, she had listed a clover with a ladybug on it. But the clover was, that clover was in, had all sorts of funky stuff going on with it. But I'd already had a ladybug. I already have the Valentine's ladybug one, so I wanted, I was hoping she was going to have a bee on this funky clover. And lo and behold, she did. Look how funky that clover is. This one and the ladybug were the only two that had the clover in this sort of design, and I love it. So I had, you know, had to get it. And I did. So I'm very happy about that. And then the final one, maybe I shouldn't have got this one, but I really did. It's just a simple, like, purple dragon. Um, I try not to have more than one of the same dragon, um, but I sort of you know, justified it by saying it kind of looks more different. Like, not more different, but it kind of... It's different from the one that I've got that's purple, so... There's my justification. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Okay, so remember how I mentioned Chatelaine a little bit ago? I got more stash, y'all. And... These were gifts. I did not buy them. They were gifts. I was contacted by... Her name is Suze. She go, she's um, known as Flossed Toot Susie on Instagram, I think. She contacted me and she's like, Hi, I just, you know, she said all these nice things and whatnot. She's like, you know, I have two Chatelaine kits that I am not going to ever do. Would you want them? And this was shortly after I had posted in Stash on uh, Stitch Mania. Ooh, speaking of Stitch Mania, because I promised Katie and Garrett I was going to mention this. If you <laughs> um, want to be a part of Stitch Mania, you have to answer and abide by the three questions that are mentioned, that you, you are required to answer three questions when you join Stitch Mania. Please, for the love of Jesus, read them <laughs> and then answer them. There's always so much on that group of people getting their panties in a bunch because someone said a bad word or, you know, showed a penis. I, it's like, you know, one of the questions is you have to be okay with not safe for work content such as strong language and sometimes nudity. Now, obviously, people are just throwing dick pics up there, but, you know, there is one guy who does some great work, and he does embroidery, and some of them are kind of, you know, there's a penis on there sometimes. So, I promised them I would mention something about that in this video. Please, you know, read those questions and answer them fully, and make sure you understand what is being asked. Because, oh my god, much like McKenna, if somebody mentions, I don't want to get into any drama here, I usually stop reading after the word drama because <sighs> there's, you know, it's whatever. So, what was I talking about? Chatelaine. Two kits. That's why. Because I posted in, in Stitch Mania and she watches my videos, so she contacted me. 
And she said, hey, I want to send you two gifts. I'm like, okay, send them. Except more grateful than what I just sounded like. So they arrived. And here's her card. You know this tickled my fancy because this is a lovely Hands Across the Sea sampler card of Miss Marianne Bournes, 1791. Um, wrote a lovely note. Love her dearly. I love her handwriting. Um... Um, the two kits she sent me, just, they're not on European Cross Stitch or even the official Chatelaine website. And she even brought, brought up that this should have been a series, but these were the only two that, you know... I was able to even find. So, I don't know. We're wondering if she just didn't finish the series, maybe? So, the first one is from the Elements. It's called Air. And it looks like a lovely bell pull. And there's some heart anger going on. And all that looks like fun. Okay, maybe you shouldn't see the price. I don't know if I just showed it or not. And it's fully kitted. This is a little bit messier than what it should be because I wanted to touch all of the floss, so I took them all out of the bag. So, but it's got all the beads, all of the... Is there Krynek in this? Yes, there's Krynek in it. We got Karen Water Lilies. We've got MPI. And it looks like Anchor or something. And uh, Mill Hill Treasures. So yeah, ain't that fun. And then we've got the elements Terra or Earth. A lot going on. Once again, more hard anger going on. Am I okay? No, we're good. We're good. Okay. Um, all of the fun business going on. Lots of cryonic, lots of treasures. Karen Water Lilies, it looks like again. Um, Vopel and Halenbeck Linen Band? What the hell is that? Um, okay, yeah, so there's that. Fully kitted. And you know how I said she sent me two? Well, that was a lie. She sent me three. Um, this third one is she, this was a couple of days after she had originally contacted me, and she's... She said, hey, I also have this partially started Chatelaine, full-size Chatelaine. Do you want me to send that along, too? And at first I'm just like... <sighs> I... I have this weird thing where I don't... care for getting... Um, partially started projects and going off from them. I kind of like to have that feeling of that first stitch you put into a project. That's why I think I'm going to get rid of one of my things that I bought off of um, Stash Unload because they didn't say that it had already been started, and so I might um, do something with that. But anyway, and she's like, well, what if I just send you everything anyway and you just get the fabric? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so she sent me a full-size... Full kit, full size Chatelaine, um, which I guess was was originally mystery number two, because I know that she's got a uh, Martina had a mystery series, and this was the second one, and it was Convent's Herb Garden, and it's. All of the shits is there. She's got the petite treasure braid all bobbinated. Um, Karen Water Colors. This will be the first one where I do Karen Water Colors. Thank God I got some Nymo thread in there because I don't know what the hell I was going to use to bead Fairy Moon. So I'm going to use that for that as well. But Karen Water Lilies and I'll have to get the DMC. But I think this only uses 310, which I've got. So it's whatever. 
but uh and it comes with delica beads which is so funny because um when jesse marie did lady of the flag she converted or i think when she just does them in general she converts mill hill beads to delica beads so that's pretty cool um to say I shit my pants is, you know, probably an understatement, but, so I'm assuming this is where the whole design is on, but, you know, she had to send me, you know, a printed out copy of the whole design, and I need to, like, sit down and read this, because, fuck, I mean, there's a lot going on here. Uh, and I can see why people want you to use the PDF rather than trying to go off the chart, because I can't read any of that. You might be thinking, oh, that's a nice design. It's the chart. I mean, there, I, it's like... It, wow. So luckily, you know, I'm assuming that it's all on the CD... So I'm assuming that I can download a PDF of it on there and just access it from my iPad. Because... Well... It, yeah. So, Suze, thank you so, so much. You don't know how much this means to me. Unfortunately, I don't think it hindered my want to buy Chatelaine's. So, my pocketbook might still be hurting a little bit. Um, but, thank you once again. You don't know how much it means to me. That's my stash, y'all. I need a cigarette now. Just kidding. I don't smoke. I was supposed to... I, pro I probably... Yeah, it was supposed to be a kind of a after sex joke. Anyway. Oh, I'm not done with stash yet because thank God I checked my notes. One other piece of stash that I got that my regular floss tube doesn't know about. I got a quantum frame from the Omnic factory. We got the 80 by 15 centimeter scroll frame rods. And, um, all the wrong way. I haven't stitched on this as much as I want to because I don't have anything to prop it up with. But as you can see on here is the sad start that I have to Angel of a New Dawn. But don't worry, I'm going to, <laughs> once I get done with Fairy Moon, you know, this is the mirabilia I'm going to be working on the most. I feel bad for Athena, because she she was started right after I finished Rose of Sharon, and I'm kind of neglecting her, but oh well. And um, it's sad because I, there's, I don't, I mean, I did have a needle minder that kind of went with this. It had a little angel holding a dove on it, but um, the magnets kind of fell off of it, and I don't have any glue. So I'm using the closest thing I have to even look remotely angelic, and it's the snowflake dragon from Clay by Cam. But how do I like this frame? I can love it because we're talking drum tight. And as I said in my tutorial video, it has a drum tightness that Neil Peart from Rush would be jealous of. And speaking of Rush, Amy Mann, who sings the lead vocals on Voices Carry from Till Tuesday, appeared in a Rush song. All so sorts of full circles happening today. It's great. I'm loving it. Okay, so that's that. I know I kind of just like briefly went over that, but um, get one. <laughs> um, from the moment I had placed my order to the moment I got it was about three weeks total. I told them what I wanted. It took about a week for them to ship it out. It was here in two weeks which was a lot quicker than I thought it was. Um, for this size, the 80 by 15 is about 60 American dollars, 
roughly. Um, I know some people, after I had posted a photo of me getting this frame, a lot of them were um, saying, well, I ordered it on such and such date, mine still hasn't arrived, or I just got the shipping notification, how'd you get yours so quick? And when I had first contacted them, they were in the process of moving all of their stuff to a new location. So my guess is that in the process of moving, because when I placed, you know, when I told them which one I wanted, I think they were just getting done with doing all of that. So it was sort of, okay, you know, I'm sort of the start of this orderly fashion, get it out there process. So my guess is in the process of them moving to a new location, they, you know, just some stuff got sort of jumbled up and things are arriving later than they should. That's how I'm justifying it. I don't, I, I don't know for sure. That is just, I'm trying to make you feel better if you have ordered one and it still hasn't arrived. So there's that. That's everything, y'all. I had a lot more than usual than I usually do. I don't know. Words are hard sometimes. I just, I just finished watching Jan, Jan Hicks's new video, and she said that a lot, that words are hard. Words are hard, says the person who at the beginning of the video, coming full circle again, all sorts of full circles happening, who at the beginning of the video said that they have an editing business. Full circle. Okay, so plans for after this. <clears throat> Finishing this. Not the beating, but the stitching, for the most part. <clears throat> and then... My original plan was to start working on Hannah Sanderson again, which I might do. But yesterday, McKenna and Cassandra Martinez, who y'all need to watch on Floss too because she does and they send, and her progress pisses me off because I want to be that far. There's also another person on Instagram who's stitching and they send and they're way further than me and I wish I was that far. Maybe soon. So, they are doing what is known as hashtag Stitch Madness 2019 where you just put all your whips into a thing and then I think it's an every other day thing where you hit the, the decision wheel and that'll decide what you work on. I might do that for all my Stitch 9 projects. Maybe. We'll see. Even though I really want to work on Hannah. Maybe I'll just cheat and start with that and then go from there. Because I want to have Hannah and Fairy Moon finished by StitchCon. I need more bragging stuff besides Rose of Sharon. Which still needs to be framed. But I'm poor. I just thought I would show that because I really like this. I like it. She's just hanging up there for... <laughs> for now. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with her after I move, though. What? I, what I, you know? Uh, <sighs> this video has been a lot of emotional roller coasters. All right, y'all. This is it for me. I just want to thank all of you. All of you for, in my last video, when I was talking about bringing what brings you joy and to check up on others who seem happy but not, you know, but not might not be, and just all of the comments that I got about that, it was I loved. See, like I said at the end of my last my last floss tube was, re, you know, I want you to tell me what brings you joy to bring me joy, and I just I mean. I don't think I've smiled so much at reading comments since probably my first video because there was a lot of lovely things said in those comments about, you know, this is what I do in the morning that brings me joy or, I hey, I contacted somebody I haven't talked to in, you know, years and I've been meaning to contact them but your video, you know, finally let, let me do that and, you know, that... That makes me feel like I'm doing my part. If there's one thing, if somebody were to ask me, if there's one thing I want to do with my life, in sort of a broad scheme, you know, not as, you know, in a money-making scheme, the one thing I would say that I would want to do is just to bring people joy, to make people happy. And that's why, you know, that's why I try to be funny. 
that's also why, you know, I studied psychology because I thought I was going to do something to help people. And, you know, and I'm kind of helping people. I'm bringing people joy. And y'all are bringing me joy. It's great. So, do I have a final thought for this week's video? Not really. But continue being joyful. You know, find the things that bring you joy. I'm sorry, Jan. I'm kind of stealing this from you. Jan Hicks is the one. Jan Hicks, everybody. Uh, she's the one. She's here now. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Jan Hicks is the one that really started this joy. And like I said in my last video, when she was bringing this stuff up, it really... I was really reflecting on it a lot, so I'm kind of sort of incorporating that a little bit into the end of my videos as well, because I think it helps. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Almost at 1,500. Um, I'm not yet, though. I'm 10 away, which is why I'm not doing my giveaway this video, because as of before I started recording, not at 1,500. 10 people away, though. So, possibly next video. Um... I hope I have a floss tube next week. It might be a short video. If I don't, tomorrow night, I think I have the house to myself, so I might record a Stitch With Me video to put up for next week in case I don't have a floss tube. Um, just because, you know, I'm going to be moving in two weeks now. And I kind of want content up because I might not be able to record a floss tube. So, and I might record two just in case I'm not able to do one next week or the following week. I, I know for a fact I'm not going to do one the following week. So, if I am able to get in a floss tube next week, then I'll save that stitch with me for the following. But maybe I'll still record two so I can have a backup for another time when I don't have a floss tube. Because I need to get on a weekly, <clears throat> weekly thing again. And I say again as if that's always been the case. It was only that case for like three videos. So, and it's, oh god, it's the end of February. It's already almost March. And March will mark nine months that I started my floss tube. And I've only had 20 videos. I had a floss tube baby. This is my floss tube baby right now. Which, you know, which maybe is why, you know, I feel so bloated. It's because I have a floss tube baby. What are you on, Kyle? Nothing. I'm just really hungry right now. All right, everybody. I love you all. And hopefully I'll see you guys soon. So just keep being amazing. Let those fucks fly. And, you know... Say no to acid. What the fuck are you doing? Don't do acid. Say no. Say no to acid. Goodbye, everybody.